Bolt is everyone's moment. Bolt is community. Bolt is showcasing talent. Bolt is being courageous. Unifying. Encouraging. Authentic. Legacy. Bolt is uplifting. Bolt is connection. Inspiring. Expression. Exciting. Culture. Bolt is empowering. Bolt is diverse. Bolt is Skyview. It gives the leadership class a chance to take ownership in really bringing our school together. Bolt is breaking barriers. It's breaking barriers. It's breaking barriers. It's breaking barriers. Breaking barriers. It's breaking barriers. Breaking barriers. Bolt is breaking barriers. Bolt is breaking barriers. Bolt is breaking barriers. Bolt is breaking barriers. Breaking barriers. Breaking barriers. Bolt is breaking barriers. Bolt is breaking barriers. Hey guys, my name is Jessica and I'll be your MC for the video. Building our legacy together, Bolt. For the last couple of years, leadership has put their blood, sweat, and tears into putting on Bolt, an assembly showcasing Skyview's talent, individuality, and life experiences in effort to unify Skyview High School. For our 2020 Bolt, the leadership class created the theme, Breaking Barriers. How much do you know about the people you pass in the hallway every single day? Well, used to. How much do you know about the students who you've been going to school with since forever? We realized that it may not be very much, and we decided to change that. We will be showcasing students' talents and stories, from KG's cardistry to Mark's passion for skating, and to Sydney's advice from giving back to the community, and beyond. We hope you will walk away from our program this year feeling closer to your peers and driven to continue to break down barriers. This year is not going to be like every other year for obvious reasons, but we are determined to still put on this event because we need it now more than ever. As a leadership class, we've been working on Bolt since the beginning of the school year, holding auditions, applying for grants, creating a theme that will get the message of unity across the student body. And today, for our very first video, we have Kylie Sickles in a speech about finding herself in an after-school club. Most people in this world know what it means to be the odd one out. Whether it's joining a new club, starting a new hobby, or moving to a new town, the feeling of not knowing the people around you is pretty universal. Now, people react to these situations differently. Some people are invigorated by new places and spaces, while others, like me, are terrified. My name is Kylie, I'm a senior, and I'm, weirdly enough, in multiple performing arts classes and clubs. And I'm incredibly lucky to be able to say that I'm where I need to be, assured in my classes, confident around my peers, and comfortable in my own skin. But I wasn't always like this. The summer before 8th grade, I moved to Vancouver from San Jose, California. Even though I had moved countless times before, this felt different. In California, I had gone to a relatively small K-8 school, so I was only around people I knew for years. Of course, being able to be confident in foreign situations is kind of like a muscle, and this environment never let me use it. So, it became weak. I moved to Washington, and I grew quiet. Aloof, to use a fancy word. I was incredibly uncomfortable, and the only friends I made were because they reached out to me, not the other way around. My teachers hailed me for being silent and doing my work, but they didn't know it was wrong. They didn't know that I was destined to be a loud theater kid. They just knew I did my work. So, being praised for my actions, I didn't stop. I stayed in my own bubble, and I would probably still be there today if I hadn't cried backstage at a drama production. <laughs> Silly, I know. Especially for someone who wasn't even acting in the show. But an actress spoke to me while she was doing her makeup, and she asked if I was going to do the big spring musical. Of course, I... I started making excuses, all the while thinking, of course not. That would mean being on stage and dancing, not to mention singing. I was horrible at all of those things. I wanted to stay in my own bubble. I was safe there. But then another actress came by. She started telling me that I should do it, that she would love to be in it with me. Both of them started talking at once, both of those amazing people who I didn't have the guts to talk to on my, on my own and just talking so loud and... <sighs> They burst the bubble. <laughs> I started crying. Immediate shock and concern aside, the actress my age asked if I wanted to sit with her and her friends during lunch. I took her up on that offer. Despite everything, I did indeed join the musical, and I loved it. The stage, the lights, and the joy of performing got to me. 
I even had three lines. I got to say yes, yes, and oh. <laughs> Surprisingly, I found I loved singing in the chorus, too. I loved singing so much, in fact, that I joined choir the next year, even though I had been bullied for my voice in the past. Even though I knew nothing about music, I knew it would be fun, so I just did it. That moment, that one incredible moment where two people I barely knew reached out to me became a catalyst. I started understanding the value of being uncomfortable. I continued acting on stage and I got to be a lead in an award-winning play. I continued choir and I worked my way into chamber. I became co-president of the Creative Writing Club. I studied programming, I joined AP classes, and I learned an incredible amount about myself. I'm loud. <laughs> I'm unafraid and I'm me. All because of those two people in the drama club freshman year decided to reach out to me. Now is the time where people usually go, yeah, that's great and all, but why does this matter to me? Well, I'm here to tell you that it's not too late to learn what I've learned. It's never too late. New environments are terrifying, but it's where we can discover ourselves. Cheesy, I know, but it's true. So use my experiences. Go join that club. Try that new class. Try that hobby. The worst that can happen is you don't like it. And even then you learn something about yourself. I mean, Skyview itself has an incredibly varied choice of clubs. If you're looking for something more relaxed, try Creative Writing Club, <clears throat> 215 to 245 every Tuesday in Mr. Wiley's room. <clears throat> or maybe you join a community theater or a local book club. Maybe it's just reading a new genre of book or playing a different video game. <laughs> the point is, you'll never know unless you try. It'll probably be awkward. You'll be the odd one out. <laughs> maybe you'll even cry backstage at a drama production. But that's okay. These experiences are what separate surviving and thriving. You just need to take the step into the unknown. Thank you. <laughs> Up next, we have Junior McKenna Miltenberger, who's singing and playing the guitar. Could have been one. Just like all the others But you lit up my life This is what it's like to be lovers You and me need never be lonely again Spin with me endlessly, or at least until the end. Please never fall in love again. Oh, please never fall in love again. And if some other guy. Shrek DVDs, maybe, please never fall in love again, oh, please never fall in love again, please. Up next, we have Ali Parmenter with a speech and poem about her experiences. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Ali Parmenter. I've gone through some rough times. I moved to three different schools in three different states with four new teachers all in one school year. I thought everything would be fine because I made friends quickly, but after the third move, things were different. 
I was your average second grade girl, but I thought I was special because I like basketball and that was considered a guy's sport. I like singing, playing the piano, dancing, and hanging out with my friends. My life seemed normal. I was living in Apex, North Carolina at the beginning of my second grade year. My school year had started out fine. My teacher's name was Miss Knuckles and we were Miss Knuckles Knuckles. I guess you get the punchline. Then in about October, my mom and dad told me that we would be, that I would be switching to a second third grade class split due to too many people in my class. A few days later, my mom and dad told me it was really due to the fact that my family was moving. The next week, I'd moved into my new class. My new teacher's name was Miss Peacock. She was nice, had blonde hair, and made learn f learning fun, but those times didn't last very long. I moved at the end of November. My dad had gotten a new job in Las Vegas, Nevada, but we didn't have a home yet. So I lived with my grandma Mimi and my grandpa Paka. It was a, it was kind of difficult adjusting to my new school because I had moved into the school during the Christmas season and everyone was preparing for a Christmas concert. Miss Sexton tried to get people to befriend me, but I wasn't really willing to become friends with anyone due to the fact that I'd be moving very soon. After Christmas, my family bought a house in Las Vegas. We moved and I finally settled in. My teacher's name was Miss Orgill and she introduced me to one of my best friends, Allison. Allison was awesome. Her sister Lauren was my sister Josie's best friend. We would play together and we were as close as sisters almost. My third grade year was the hardest year yet. Allison that year had invited me to eat lunch with her and her mother, a kindergarten teacher at our school, every Friday. I accepted. Then one day, Allison started inviting my other friend, Mel Alyssa, to our luncheons. On one of the Friday luncheons, I was gone. My friend Alyssa told Allison that I was a jerk to her. Alyssa told Allison that I was talking bad about her to my other friends, even though I hadn't said anything about her to my other friends. Allison confronted me and asked if what Alyssa said was true. I told Allison that it wasn't true. Luckily, she believed me, but ever since that experience, I've never felt the same. Fast forward two years and I'm now living in Vancouver, Washington. It was my fourth elementary school in the beginning of my fifth grade year. It took me a long time to adjust to my new school. I made some friends, but we drifted apart after a while. In middle school, I felt even more lost. I tried to make friends, but it was hard. I started eating lunch with some girls in my classes. That was where I met JC, my best friend. First, we would just sit together at lunch, but the kindness and friendship that we showed each other slowly grew into strong, rude friendship. But even that didn't last that long. My freshman year, a new school, and my friends had all gone to Columbia River, including JC. I felt alone. I sat with some of my friends from elementary school, but I felt left out. I found some other friends that we would play Uno, Apples to Apples, or other card games with at lunch. It was so much fun, but those times didn't last long either. My sophomore year, we had different lunches, so I couldn't eat with my previous lunch group. I found another group of friends to eat with, but I left that group too. I found another group of friends to sit with, but I didn't really talk to them. Each new year brought new friends, new experiences, and new opportunities, but through it all I had the same feelings of loneliness. I wrote a poem about my experiences and feelings. It shows how I felt throughout my life and everything. Here it is. No one knew that I was the new girl. No one knew the difficulties I had experienced. No one knew my deepest desires, my dreams, my hopes, or my heart. No one had known that this shy girl would come out and tell the world her story. No one knew who I truly was until I met you. No one knew you gave me hope. No one knew you helped 
pull me out of that dark pit of despair that everyone falls to at some point in their life. No one knew that once we drifted ways, I would fall into that same pit. No one knew the girl that seemed so happy at ta all the time was really struggling with her loneliness. No one knows that she still struggles with that loneliness, and it gnaws at her every day. No one knows the struggles of other people, so why do we pretend they don't exist? No one knows that those struggles make us who we are. No one knows. That's why we have to make a stand. Show who we are, even when we believe that we'll be shunned by our friends. No one knows. I hope this poem and speech will help you find your voice and ask for help from friends. Because no one deserves to struggle through life by themselves. No one. Up next is Mark Kupsa with a video about his skating experiences. What's up Skyview, my name is Mark and today I want to talk about skateboarding. For me, skateboarding is like some sort of a stress reliever. It like, it makes me feel free. Now I've been skating for about a year now and I made some pretty decent progress. Do they really have to cut the grass right now? Yo, can, can you quiet down? Skateboarding is the type of activity that can take my mind off of the stresses of schoolwork, family, friends, maybe drama that's going on, and really just focus on myself and my progress when it comes to skating. It's really nice for me to just get out and skate with my friends and just encourage them to do something that they have been trying to to do for a long time and just seeing them succeed it's it's just the best feeling ever one thing that kind of gets in the way are the haters and the stereotypes that are around the skate community and we have been stereotyped as destructive people that will wreck everything down on their way and break the law and be pretty much irresponsible but come on now do I look like the type of person to do that yes we do have a bad reputation from previous skaters but we are not like that. For example, there's a skate club at Skyview. I don't know if you knew this or not, but there is one. The purpose of the club is just build an environment around like the skate culture, you know? Sometimes we go to the skate parks, we play skate games, watch different videos of how people skate. And really the key here is just to encourage people to just go out there, take their skateboard and have fun. With that being said, do not take skaters for granted. We're just normal people, just like all of you guys. We also stress about things, and skating is just a way for us to cope with it. With that being said, thank you so much for listening. <laughs> Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I literally almost said that. Thank you so much for listening, and go out and skate. And here is freshman Sydney Potter talking about an experience that changed her life. Breaking Barriers, Helping Others by Sydney Potter. In sixth grade, I went on a mission trip to Seattle. While I was there, I washed windows for a senior care home, I did yard work, and I went to Operation Sag Lunch. Operation Sag Lunch is a where you make a meal and you serve it hot under this bridge in Seattle. This area is gated and there's portal potties, hand washing stations, and picnic tables provided for the people who come and eat there. People can come far and wide and eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner here. The people we um, did this for really appreciated the work we did because they got to eat a fresh hot meal and they got to live one more day. At the senior care home, um, when I was washing windows, it kind of felt like a chore. It was really fun and a lot of work, but the seniors, when we were finished, got to finally look out and see the nature around them. Yard work was hard too because we had to pull weeds and make the garden look good. But after we did, the seniors could see all the pretty nature that was around them. So this represents breaking barriers because we went out of our way to help others in need. This is Medical Teams International. It is a museum exhibit in Seattle where you can go and you can look at all the different natural disasters in the world currently today and how Medical Teams International is helping them. Their mission statement is to demonstrate the love of Christ to people affected by disaster, conflict, and poverty around the world. And this brings me to my next topic, which is UMCOR. UMCOR is the United Methodist Committee on Relief. It is located in the Carolinas and also in Utah, but we went to the one in Utah. UMCOR is a big warehouse where you can make medical bags and you can sell. When I was sewing, um, we made shawls, blankets, pillows, pillowcases, things like that for the mothers and their children so they wouldn't freeze in winter and they could have something warm after a natural disaster. The medical bags, there was 
a lot to them because they were big, giant, gallon-sized bags that held toothpaste, toothbrushes, band-aids, washcloths, towels, things like that. And they were shipped off to people who need them from a natural disaster. The most important part about um, Metal Team, yeah, about Encore, is that it is behind the scenes work. You don't get to actually see the effect of helping. And yes, it might be boring and long, but it's really important. In eighth grade, I went back to Seattle. But instead of doing um, Operation Sack Lunch and the senior care home, I cut blackberries for a lady who couldn't do them herself, and I went to Northwest Harvest. So cutting blackberries, there was a lot of them, and it took a lot of work because it started to rain, but we got it all done. The lady we did it for really appreciated the work we did because we helped her make her yard look better. Northwest Harvest is another warehouse, but there's two different rooms you can go in. One has one food, one has another food. And what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take this food, put it into a bag. The bag will get tied. The tied bag will go into another area where it would get put in boxes. The boxes would have to be made. And then the boxes would be sealed up and shipped off to people who need this food. So we ended up doing oats and we ended up packing 4,350 pounds of oats, which equals 3,346 meals. And that's what we did for them. They got to like have one more food to let them live one more day. So everything I just told you about represents breaking barriers because we went out of our way to help others in need, even if it doesn't feel like that. Volunteering definitely counts though, and volunteering will do a lot. But chores do not count, unfortunately. But say that an elderly person's garbage can fell over and they couldn't pick it up by themselves, but you only had 10 minutes to go to the store and back and you couldn't delay, but you stopped and pick up their garbage can for them, that would be considered helping. So go out of your way and help others in need. Go and break barriers. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to this week's Bolt Performances. Join us next week for another video featuring extraordinary people and their experiences with breaking barriers. A big thank you to today's performers and the leadership class for making this happen. Stay safe, wash your hands, and we'll see you next week.